Hello ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are all well. I know it's been a little while since we've seen each other because there has been literally nothing for me to show you while we've been in stage four lockdown. Um, what that consists of is not being allowed to go anywhere, not being allowed to see people, not being allowed to eat out. Uh, we're only allowed to go within five kilometers of our home in order to get groceries or to go to work or to exercise for one hour a day. So we are not allowed to go anywhere, no toy shopping, unfortunately. So we're doing a lot of online ordering of just about everything we need. And it's just clogging up the Australia Post network as well. So, I mean, nothing's been really exciting enough for me to, sh for me to show you, unfortunately. But um, I have filmed a behind the scenes video of Justin's unboxing and reviewing process. So I do hope that's interesting for you guys. I do know some of you want to know what his setup is like, uh, what kind of equipment he uses, and if he runs off script, which he absolutely does. So hopefully that helps some of you if you are interested in also becoming a viewer or a video maker. It's certainly um, good to see what it's like for someone to start from scratch. Um, to use very simple, like unprofessional, when I say unprofessional, I mean like studio lights and studio equipment and that sort of thing. Um, it's not necessary when you're starting out and it's also really not feasible in terms of budget. So hopefully that helps some of you guys. So I do have a few other videos planned. One of them is the Harley Quinn Birds of Prey cosplay. I've got 70 to 80% of what I need for the entire cosplay but I'm just working through the logistics of how I'm going to film it. And it's probably going to be a part one and part two, and there's going to be a DIY and a where to buy um, factor as well, because, you know, everyone has different budgets, including myself and things that I can justify buying or not justify buying, because a lot of that stuff is actually designer. Um, and so I'd like to be able to give different price points and different options for everyone. Uh, who would like to do the cosplay as accurately as possible. And then the last video, I haven't worked out whether or not I can even do it unless I have enough people contributing, but I'd like to do sort of a discussion video, a bit of almost like a Q and A or a let's chat about uh, certain topics related to the collecting community, but not so much, you know, collecting itself. That's like Justin's area. So for me, I feel like a lot of people ask me about relationships and collecting, how they um, deal with their partner's lack of support for the hobby or just introducing the hobby to their partner. Um, being the wife of someone who collects a lot, uh, I feel like I have some perspective that I can offer on, you know, the compromises that you have to make with each other and the understanding and the support that you should offer. Um, whether or not you are into the hobby yourself. If you do have uh, another question or a topic that you think we should discuss, please feel free to comment it down below. I will do my research before doing a video because I don't pretend to be an expert on anything. I will try and get um, as a well-informed opinion as I can to offer you guys. Um, I don't pretend to be a relationships expert. I don't pretend to be a psychologist. Uh, my background is in architecture, so I mean, unless it's a question about building and spaces, I really can't um, pretend to be an expert on any of those things. So it would be more just like a casual chat, uh, offering perspective, and hopefully um, when we have more people contributing to the conversation, then we can actually um, start being much more helpful. So. I won't chat your ear off anymore. I will cut to future me who is filming the behind the scenes video. Again, I hope you guys enjoy it and I will see you on the other side. Okay guys, well, here we are behind the scenes of the Alita unboxing and review. I'm just gonna show you a sneak peek of how Justin likes to record and how he runs off script thinking about what he's talking about. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys figure unboxing and review video and yes, Today is the day, finally we're going to be taking a look at none other than Alita Battle Angel herself in her final appearance from the movie. So just quickly, can we go over the equipment that you have here? So I know your light box is from Pulu's, P-U-L-U-Z. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. So many people asking who the light box is, yeah, P-U-L-U-Z is the brand. I don't know if it's written here anyway. No, it isn't. Yeah. And the size I'd say is about... 60 centimeters. 60 centimeters cubed. 60 by 60. Yeah. And then you've got a, what are these called? Blue 
microphones? Yes, it's a Yeti blue microphone, I'm pretty sure. It's the black edition, not that it makes any difference. <laughs> yeah, the, the colour doesn't matter. And the Yeti caster is the arm, and it comes with this shock mount. So I found with this, if I had it sitting on the table, I used to have it literally in the light box, just like off camera. And if I tap the table, it would be so loud because this is so sensitive. So now mm. it's out of the way. And also the shock mount helps you with not getting those little like taps on the table. Mm -hmm. If you aren't moving stuff around oh, like yeah. that, you will hear that quite loud in the camera. And then of course, just a regular tripod with a um, phone mount. They're both by Manfrotto, yes. not sponsored. Yes. But very good in terms of camera equipment, so... Sturdy. I, the initial one that I had was like an AliExpress special. <laughs> um, and it was not sturdy. So this is much more sturdy. And that means that if I'm moving stuff around at precarious angles such as this... Oh gosh, yeah. Then it, it does stay put, which is a big problem if you're um, using a, a, like a janky one. And you're sort of moving around. Because sometimes you'll bump the camera and you don't want it to be too obvious. Mm -hmm. Here, of course, we have the box art for Alita herself. As you can see, a picture of Alita right up here in the front of the box. This is an image from the movie, not the figure herself. Also, it's curious to note the fact that we are getting the red wall paint. We'll also see Alita wrapped down there along the bottom and Battle Angel on the front. This has to be one of the most intricate pieces of box art design that I've ever seen by Hot Toys. They've pretty much used all of their tricks to create this piece right here. And just to quickly show you guys the space we use for the actual filming setup. It's not a lot. This is just the desk nook in our bedroom. Um, Justin's got a, I think it's an LG display with his MacBook plugged in. And then the light box just takes up the other half of the desk. The, I think these are called Alex. Um, drawers on either side are from Ikea and they are perfect because they're the right height to fit under a desk and store some uh, equipment. In terms of the actual software that Justin uses to film, this is called Filmic Pro. I think it's about 20 bucks. Um, on... I'm not sure. It was, it was an amount and it was rather pricey, but yeah. it's, it's worth it. You can control a lot of different stuff that the normal iPhone camera app can't. So whenever anyone asks me sort of how do you get started with reviews, you only really need your phone but I would suggest getting a custom camera app because you do want to control like exposure, white balance, color balance, all that sort of stuff. Especially working it. in a light box and yes. with really harsh lighting, you don't want the um, product to get blown out. Like you can see in this shot that like this part looks like gray and then it's not an even lighting setup. Whereas obviously when you can fully control it, you can make it look a lot more even if that makes sense. Mm. Here's a behind the scenes shot of Justin trying to manipulate the figure into a pose that he'd like to have her in. I'm literally just trying to get her to stand so I can get that stuff out of the light box and do the articulation segment. And hopefully oh, okay. it doesn't fall over. I've had a few figures actually fall over and I'm saying, you know, Justin, why on earth did you not just lay that down? But, you know, nevertheless, sometimes you take a risk. And Justin doesn't film in order either. He sort of films in whatever makes sense in terms of taking things out of the box and laying them out on the table and making a mess whatever makes the least mess is probably what you do so this is set up like because it's already set up like this for the unboxing shot so if i'm going to do an overhead for the articulation then i may as well do it that's why sometimes you'll see like some accessories that are on the figure earlier like maybe guns are holstered and backpacks are on and stuff and then when you get to the articulation all of that stuff is no longer on there it's because it was filmed first so it's not me taking this stuff off to try and show articulation better i know i kind of wish it was that but it actually just happens to be me being a little bit lazy but nevertheless i like to do it in that sort of order just because it's already set up i like to make the least amount of work for myself it makes the uh, filming process go a bit quicker if that makes sense mm. Just going over articulation on Alita herself. Now bear in mind... <laughs> this happens a lot, by the way, guys. If you think he does everything in the one take, you'd be wrong. Yeah, no, I wish it was that simple. But because I always forget to move the camera back a little bit because when I try and bring the figure forward so it's in frame, as I'm still recording, I tend to bump the tripod and then it looks shaky. So <laughs> I always move it Move it back and then try again. Just going over articulation on Alita herself. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. 
So Justin's just taking the base out from the Alita box. He's already started laying the accessories out in the light box. Not a lot with this one, but I have a feeling that rubbery black pleather looking suit is going to be really difficult to finagle onto her. accessories that come with Alita Battle Angel. As you can see, it's not a hell of a lot, but they are kind of the primary accessories that she did use throughout the course of the movie. You need to take a seat, do you? Now, the only real issue with the way that I have to film with this stupid turntable is that it makes an awful racket, so I have to bring the microphone way out, otherwise you'll hear this tick, 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 tick. Ah. And um, yeah, I've got a few comments saying that you can hear it, so now I just don't take the risk. I pull the microphone way out, and that way you won't hear it, hopefully. So Justin's gotten to the point in the video where he's doing the comparison with another figure, but unfortunately there aren't any other figures from the Alita movie, and I don't think there will be any other figures, so... I think Justin's hard pressed. He's in the collection room now. I'm going to see how long he takes. He's coming in with I'm Black Widow. Black Widow. I don't know why. I just think that <laughs> it's like a slim, slender female body, so it kind of makes sense so you can see like how a fully robotic female body would look from Hot Toys, and also like a human style body. So hopefully that makes sense in the yeah, terms that's, of a comparison. That's not a bad comparison. If you had pulled out like Superman or something, I would have questioned it. I was it. thinking Iron Man because it's like robotic yeah, yeah, body. Like robotic, yeah, right? but um. I don't know, I think Black Widow is a more suitable comparison. I didn't realise how big Alita's head was, but I guess it was... It's cartoonishly big. It's her whole animated kind of look, I oh think. My God. But then against other people in the film, she didn't look that big in the head, so I don't know. Now we're up to the part where Justin is trying to put a cool pose together and I assume you're going to put it on the rotating base as well or is that going to be too dangerous if she's standing on her hands or something? I'm trying to do the handstand but the balance isn't, it just isn't quite available. I, tr I try to do the one hand handstand, it, like it almost stays. It, it, almost stays but i don't think it's going to be possible unfortunately i'm trying to copy ultra ben's pose from his amazing photography but yeah i don't think it's going to happen i might have to cheat and kind of do her like doing what do you call that like a backwards leaning type oh, thing no. maybe we'll see how did he do it he probably used some sort of stand and photoshopped it out oh so we kind of gave in and ended up using the big base she comes with with the um, waist grabber so that's going to hold her up in her single split handstand pose it'll have to do otherwise forego the pose and i'd rather include the pose than not yeah it's kind of iconic and at least now you can put it on the turntable and not have to be afraid that it's going to come falling down. Even if I had managed it to get it to balance, 100%, 10 times out of 10, it would have fallen and I would have been sitting there with some <laughs> scratched paint on Alita's nose. Oh my gosh, being no. Like, Justin, why? Why did you do that? So yes, I'm glad that this is the eventual outcome. I honestly don't know why I didn't initially go to the display base because not only now can it stand, but also people get to see what it looks like if you use the display base. So yeah. it's a win-win, a I say. Given she's going to have to be posed or displayed on her own, you may as well have her sort of in almost like a complete scene set up. So. I probably do that in, dis in the display because it's dynamic enough and you wouldn't ever see me do that with any other figure. So Exactly. I think it makes sense to have Alita in a crazy pose like that.
Just wrapping up on the Hot Toys Alita Battle Angel figure, I have to say this is kind of a figure that I knew was going to impress, but by no means did I expect it to impress me as much as it has. It's been a long wait, and by no means am I excusing Hot Toys for delaying this figure time and time again, but to be honest, I'm kind of glad they did if it meant getting it just right, and that's exactly what they've done. They nailed it through and through. Now, for the photos that you see on Justin's Instagram, they aren't taken on his phone. They are taken by his um, Olympus. Uh, I've forgotten what That's it's called. That's a horrible... It's a uh, OMD, OMD EM10 Mark III. Yes. There's a lot of numbers, That's... a lot of letters. <laughs> So that's um, shot in RAW so that he can edit the photos and play around with the lighting and everything uh, on Photoshop on his uh, either his MacBook or his iPad. And then he uploads them separately. Yes, and the thumbnails are all taken on the same camera. Everything edited in RAW. Gives you the most flexibility when you're uh, editing your pictures because it captures a lot of light data that potentially would have been lost. So if your picture's a little bit too dark, chances are you can lighten it up in RAW and you won't lose any quality. So that's a handy hint for those of you who don't shoot in RAW yet. Yes, so you don't have to invest in the most expensive camera to do that. Even your phone can shoot in RAW, actually. There you go. So as long as you have that setting on um, and you know how to work with those files, a quick you know YouTube tutorial or something like that could show you and you could improve your photography by tenfold just getting the lighting right maybe not maybe, tenfold maybe not tenfold but a big part of good photography is definitely getting the lighting right this clothing a liter in the background there yes i didn't include this in the review so this is like a what do you call it, like a bonus <laughs> or or clip it's very it's quite fiddly but it's not as hard as you might think like this thing just slips on is it velcro no, it's not velcro it's zipper oh zipper. that's which is a bit of a challenge, obviously, but um, yeah, the pants just slide on, the, the, the vest thing just goes on. They are very, like, silky, so, like, it literally just... It'll slide off. It slides pretty easily. So, I can attest to this. One of the best things about filming on your phone is actually editing on your phone using uh, the same files, so there's no time wasted transferring uh, f videos off cameras onto computers or anything like that. Justin and I both use this software, which is called LumaFusion. Um, I believe it is also an expensive app, but definitely worth what you pay for it. It's super easy to use, um, pretty instinctive. And because the files are all there, you just drag and drop from your, um, your photo reel. And it's really easy to bring music and other stuff into from like your files uh, up in the cloud or something like that. So we'll just show you a little bit of just an editing. Me editing out my brief Your breathing issues. gaps. <laughs> yes, sometimes, sometimes it's not all one take. Usually it is. You'll notice a very seamless transition usually. And um, hopefully, well, hopefully you don't. Hey, there we go. But um, it's, I found that the reason I don't edit on my computer anymore is because the timeline is just instant. This is all 4K 60 frames and it exports in real time. So if it's a 20 minute video, it will take 20 minutes to export. Whereas mm. on my Mac, the file size is huge depending on what you choose to export it as. And for some reason, Final Cut Pro always renders everything massive. So you'll find the, the hard drive space in your Mac just vanishes somehow. And um, it's just a hell of a lot slower. Plus I have to transfer everything. So there's file duplication. It's on here, then it's on my Mac. Then I have to delete it from both places because I don't actually keep my raw footage. So I find editing on the phone quickest, easiest, and also just, it just makes the most sense. That's just my opinion. It's probably a crime. I'm sure a lot of people are like, oh my God, I can't believe you're editing on your phone. But I, I don't know. I just, I love doing it. It's simple. I've got the presets for like the color grading that I like to use to get everything to look sort of the way that I want it to. Um, I try and keep it as true as possible to how it's supposed to, uh, while still having a little bit more of a punchy sort of colorful look. Um, but yeah, you won't see me editing colors or anything like that, if that makes sense. But um, the most interesting thing would probably be this component here, where I have the figure as just as the app literally glitches out. There we go. So I have the figure rotating and you can see the sides of the light box in the clip there. So what I literally do, this is giving away some trade secrets, is 
all of the shots that you can see the size of the light box, I made a pact with myself not to include my hands because it would be hell of a lot harder to crop them out. But literally, I can then go in and crop out the sides. Then, of course, we want Alita a little bit bigger, so we can just drag her and also resize her. Another cool thing about editing on your phone. And there we have Alita spinning in the whiteness rather than the light box with its super rough, janky edges. So that's the secret to how I achieve the perfect white background is cropping. Yes, it is super simplified. So there are certain technical things that you might not be able to achieve if you're doing some sort of advanced video editing. But for someone who's literally just clipping clips together and adding voiceovers or anything like that, uh, even putting an image, an overlay image, like if I want to put one like right here on top of um, the footage here, it would be super easy to do. It's a lot of drag and drop. A lot of resizing and moving along on the page like almost like photoshop to be honest and it's super easy to upload as well you can just go straight from uh, the app to youtube if you link the accounts so it's just super easy especially when you're traveling as well when justin is doing you know his um cons and adchk and that sort of thing it's much easier to go back to the hotel just edit the footage there and upload from the hotel wi-fi it literally means if we were to do either a podcast or a video at, at a convention, like when I was in San Diego, all I had to bring was my phone and or my iPad because you can mm. pretty much do everything you need to do all the way down to now, which I didn't have available at the time, full Photoshop on iPad so you can make all of your thumbnails on iPad. So I literally film, I edit, and I export and upload all on my phone. I have an external um, mic that plugs into the lightning port, just a regular lapel mic, and that means I've got kind of pro-ish audio it's not just off the basic mic and super tinny like i'm doing right now <laughs> like right now um but that means i've got good audio good video and hopefully the editing and export will be pretty good as well and then the thumbnail also hopefully fairly good because i've got full photoshop on the go on ipad so i only need to bring one or two mobile devices and i'm sorted also gimbal I strongly recommend getting a gimbal if you're doing mm -hmm. con footage. We've got the um, Osmo. Oh, you've probably got it Osmo in the drawer. Here it is. Yes. There's a four now. From so DJI. The Osmo 3. Mm -hmm. It literally is a tiny little compact guy. Um, there is a new one out, the Osmo 4, which I'm thinking about getting, and it's like a magnetic thing where you can just have a clamp on the back of your phone and it just magnetizes in place. Ooh, but yeah. it can also get a lot deeper. So my issue with this one was that when you have it, sort of, you can't get it going down as much as I would like. Mm -hmm. But the new one actually fixes that, so I may be upgrading fairly soon. So yes, if you do want to get into video editing uh, or making, you certainly don't need the most expensive equipment around, as long as you... Um... Cover all your bases, right? Yeah, exactly. You want good video, you want good audio, and you want to make sure that it's edited correctly. And a phone can achieve two out of the three of those things, the third thing is literally just this thing right here. It's a R-O-D-E, Rode. I don't know exactly how you pronounce it, but it's a just a regular lapel mic. You can get these off eBay. It wasn't that expensive. It was maybe $99 in Australia max, which means in the US it'd be like 50 bucks. <laughs> yep. And you literally plug that in. It's got a 3.5 millimeter jack. You need an adapter nowadays. Yes. Plug it into your phone and then you've got good audio as well. So good audio, good video. I actually used to use this to record all of the audio for my original reviews back in the day. So that goes to show that it can be used for proper YouTube videos, reviews, not just you know, like on the go stuff, but a phone and a good mic, you're pretty much set. All the other stuff can come. Like you can get it way down the line. You have to get that off the bat. You just need the phone and a good mic. Well, that is it everyone. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you learned something from the behind the scenes video. And as we, you know, change our equipment, as we level up as YouTubers, um, hopefully we can do more of those so you can see the progression of um, our filming, editing styles and our process and everything. We are hoping to move in the, within the next half a year, um, which means new collection room oh my god moving the figures is like hell on earth um and you know more space uh, maybe a separate office space that sort of thing and then you will hold, have a whole new setup for you guys to see then until the next video whichever one it is i hope you guys enjoyed and stay safe and i'll see you soon bye